Good morning, everyone. It is so great to see everyone today. I know that we have guests with us, which is always encouraging. So whether you're here with family or friends or just visiting for the community, whether it's your first time here or a return visit, uh, it is wonderfully encouraging us uh, to us to have you with us this morning. Please stay around after the service so that we can have a, a greater opportunity to get acquainted with you. Those of you who are engaged uh, worshiping with us online, it's great to be connected with you this morning as well. Don, thank you so much for that presentation during our, our Bible class hour about current status and future plans of Burnt Cabin Christian Camp. Uh, Don is also going to be sharing the message during our worship assembly this morning, and Richard Davis will have an introduction and uh, pray with Don before he shares that message with us. Those of you who stayed around Wednesday night after Bible classes were able to share in the joy of the Lemus family as Anderson confessed his faith in Jesus Christ and was united with him in baptism. And so we just rejoice with Anderson and his decision with that family in his salvation. So pray for Anderson, encourage him when you see him. We have a note here from Shauna James. Uh, dear church family, thank you so much for the wonderful welcome, gifts, and many beautiful cards I've received. Uh, your thoughtfulness has made me feel right at home. And so, Shauna, you continue to be an encouragement to us uh, with your new life in Christ. We heard from Alicia Stickney this morning that they have, uh, she has a, a new great grandson, Bentley James, who was born Friday, April the 1st. And uh, the parents are Price and Madison. Grandparents are Rick and Star, who are known to many of you who have been here at the BA Church for a long time. So, Alicia, we rejoice with you, with your family in this edition. And then during Bible class, Scott got a text message that a new granddaughter, Hannah K. Smith, was born this morning in Houston. So, we rejoice with Haley and Gibb and big sister Alta and the rest of the Keel family in this edition as well. Ashley Sisson uh, passes along her gratitude for our prayers that started last Sunday morning. Uh, she and Aiden are together and will be together. And so thank you for your prayers for that situation. There is the baby shower this afternoon for Emily and Ryan Vidal and next Sunday afternoon for Nicole and Justin Garner. And I've got things in different places this morning. I'm just making sure I'm, I'm hitting all of them. Jeff will have some other things to share with us as well before the shepherd's prayer. Thanks to all who came out for the work day yesterday. Chad is going to, to share a brief report about that before Jeff leads us in the shepherd's prayer. Also to let you know, our Spanish-speaking brothers and sisters will be joining us later in the service for uh, communion and uh, the close of the service together. So we look forward to sharing that time with them. Chad? Good morning. I've got a question. How many of y'all paid attention to the parking lot when y'all come in on the north side? That's over here on the right. Abby raised her hand. Bill raised his hand. He was here yesterday. He knows. If you don't pay attention to your surroundings, when you leave today, kind of look down at the carpet in here. There's not going to be as nearly as many stains that were there last time. Go out in the hallways. Look up at the ceiling tiles. You notice most of those that are stained are gone. Bill Dewey told me, he says, you know what? I never paid any attention to them ceiling tiles until I replaced a few of them yesterday. <laughs> so he became very cognizant of it. But we did. We had a lot of people, a lot of hands at work. Uh, there was stuff done in the Fellowship Hall kitchen. Steve Copeland, Robert Wilson were here running wires till 5.30 yesterday afternoon. So hopefully we'll have new locking mechanisms on our door here pretty quickly. There was a lot of painting done. There was a lot of drywall. And the amount of work that was done outside is amazing. Uh, if you look across the street, we filled another 20-yard dumpster full of junk. I don't know if that just means we're trashy or efficient. I hadn't figured out which way yet. But a big thank you to everybody that came out. If you were here yesterday, please stand up. So everybody can see who was here. You'll see some of our teams. We are very thankful for everybody that comes out. If you can't make it on these scheduled work days, this building is open 24-7, 365 days a week. If there's something that you want to get involved with, number one, if you have time or if you have a talent, and if you're time and talent, that's even better. But even if you aren't talented, that what falls into my category, there is always something up here that you can come and do. Come see me. 
And if you've never been asked to help out, I'm looking at everyone out here right now. I'm asking each of y'all to step up, come out and help out. There is always something that can be done here. God has asked us to serve. We're going to serve him first. We're going to serve each other. And how we do that, it's going to be up to you. We'll figure out how it's going to be done. But we will work together. But also a huge thank you again. Before Don takes up all of his time with uh, filling up the burnt cabin spots, if you'll notice, he is only offering chili dogs to come out there and eat. <laughs> if you come out here in October, which is October 5th, if you want to go ahead and mark it in your calendar, we'll give you breakfast and lunch. So there is an incentive to staying local. Sorry to take away from your thunder there. But anyway, once again, my thanks to everybody that did come out. The place looks wonderful. Before I pray, I just have a quick announcement. Um, Bernice Rumsey was in the hospital this, this last few days. She's sitting here today. But while she was in the hospital, her daughter passed away. Um, Diana Wetzel was her name. And she lived in the Cedar Crest nursing home. And she'd been in, she'd had a lot of health problems in the last few years. So Bernice said she had a rough week. So. Keep Bernice in your prayers, the Rumsey family, and be sure and, and give her a hug today. Before we pray, I, Tim sent out the daily bread yesterday, and I just love this scripture, and I thought I, we need to read it again. It's from Colossians 3. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you have grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. I thought, you know, those are good things to do while we're in church, but what a wonderful thing to do during the week. And I just... I hope that each of us live lives that are just like this during the week as well while we're here. It's just a good, a good way to think about living your life. Let's pray now. Dear God, as we gather in your presence today as your children, the body of Christ here in Broken Arrow, we come before you with, with hearts full of gratitude. God, we thank you for the privilege of gathering together as your people to to worship and to partake of the Lord's Supper and to commune with you. God, we ask your guidance and strength as, as we strive to be holy people. And Father, help us not to just be holy people on Sundays, but, but throughout the week as well. Help us to reflect your love, your grace, your mercy in all that we do. Father, help us to live lives that are a testament to your goodness. God, we invite you to dwell in our hearts today, change us from the inside out, and God, may your spirit live in us. Father, may your spirit give us wisdom, courage, and compassion, helping us to live our lives that honor you in everything we do. God, remind us this morning that we are connected as the body of Christ, and help us to embrace that unity and to support one another in our walk with you. And as we enter into this worship this morning, we ask your presence to be among us. God, may the songs that we sing be, be sweet offerings to your ears. May our prayers be sincere conversations with you. And may our partaking of the Lord's Supper be a solemn remembrance of your son's sacrifice. So guide us today in our worship, Father, and may the things that we do here truly honor and glorify you. Allow our hearts to be open to receive your word. May hearts be touched and lives be changed today by what takes place here this morning. 
God, may our words and our deeds always be a re reflection of your love and your grace. Allow it to shine brightly in a world that so desperately needs your light. Thank you for your love. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church family. If you would stand with me as we worship God our Father this morning. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend his cause. Maintain the honors of his word, the glory of his cross. Jesus, my God, I know his name. His name is all my trust. Nor will he put my soul to shame, nor let my hope be lost. Firm has his throne, his promise stands, and he can well secure what I've committed to his hands till the decisive hour. Then will he own my worthless name before his father's face. And in the new Jerusalem for me a place. Once I was lost, wandering in darkness, no life in sight, no hope in sight. He called my name and healed my blindness, and set me ablaze. Now I'm alive with his love ringing through my heart of stone, love ringing to wing my bones, love reaching out to save my soul, love never gonna let me go. And now my heart, so full of worship, I can't hold back, I can't contain it, for all he's done, Jesus my Savior, I am a lace and full of thanks for his love breaking through my heart of stone, love ring to hang my bones, love reaching out to save my soul, love never gonna let me go, love calling me as I am, love making me new again, love lifting me when I can, love never gonna let me go, wherever you've been, whatever you've done, come as you are, come into his open arms, wherever you've been, whatever you've done, come as you are, Come find his love breaking through my heart of stone. Love ring to hang my bones. Love reaching out to save my soul. Love never gonna let me go. Love calling me as I am. Love making me new again. Love lifting me when I can't. Love never gonna let me go. Love breaking through my heart of stone. Love bring to hang my bones. Love reaching out to save my soul. Love never gonna let me go. Love calling me as I am. Love making me new again. Love lifting me when I can. Love never gonna let me go. Love never gonna let me go. Love never gonna let me go. Amen. Go ahead and be seated, please. I me away, O Lord. I me away, O Lord. In the day of trouble, neath the shadow of your wings, I me away, O Peace, O oh Lord. Give me your peace, O oh Lord. 
In the day of trouble, neath the shadow of your wings, give me your peace, O oh Lord. Safe in your dwelling place. Safe in your dwelling place. In the day of trouble, neath the shadow of your wings, safe in your dwelling place. So hide me away, O Lord. Hide me away, O Lord. In the day of trouble, neath the shadow of your wings, Hide me away, O Lord. Hide me away, O Lord. Hide me away, O Lord. Precious blood has left me forgiven. You're like the whitest of snow, powerful to make sin and shame retreat. This covenant is making me whole, so I will rise and lift my hand. For by his mercy my life was spared. The highest name has set me free. Because of Jesus my heart is clean. Purify my heart in your presence. Teach me to discover the joy, holiness that forms as you draw me close. In you what was lost is restored, so I will rise and lift my head. For by his mercy, my life was spared. The highest name has set me free. Because of Jesus, my heart is clean. So I will rise and lift my head. For by his mercy, my life was fed. The highest name has set me free. Because of Jesus, my heart is clean. Because of Jesus, my heart is clean. Amen. Now time for the kiddos, three through about five-ish, if they would like to go to Bible Hour, now is the time. They could head out, hang to my left, and just follow all the other kiddos heading upstairs to 207 and 208S. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and have persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. 
I know not how the spirit moves, convincing men of sin, revealing Jesus through the word, creating faith in him. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not what of good or ill may be reserved for me of weary ways or golden days before his face I see. But I know who I am believing and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I committed unto him against that day. You would stand for this song before our lesson this morning. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold, their wings are strife. When the strong tides lift and the cable strain, will your anchor drift or her firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. It is safely more till the storm withstand, for it is well secured by the Savior's hand. And the cables pass from this heart to mine, can defy the blast through strength divine. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. When our eyes behold through the gathering night, the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by Heavenly shore with the storms all past war evermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep. In the Savior's love. Go ahead and be seated, please. Good morning, everyone. Glad to see you here this morning. So this morning, before I introduce our uh, guest speaker, I've got a couple of announcements, but they relate to what he's going to talk to us about or what he did talk to us about during Bible class time which was Burnt Cabin. So next Sunday morning, we will have a special contribution. We do this annually for Burnt Cabin. And just know that that money goes towards the facility. So if you listen to Don during Bible class, you know that there's a lot of great things happening and going to happen. And uh, one of the things that he failed to mention and asked me to mention was that we're working on uh, upgrading the dining hall air conditioning, near and dear to my heart, and uh, a new walk-in refrigerator freezer for the kitchen, which will also open that up. So those are exciting things that 
Uh, our monies can go help support their camp along with other things. Uh, so that special contribution, again, next Sunday morning, um, there will be plates in the back, the normal plates uh, for giving, and also plates on the communion tables back there. Uh, please note, if you write a check in the memo field, that it's for Burnt Cabin. Um, if you give cash, put an envelope or something so we can keep that separated from our normal contribution. Also online, through the website and Easy Tithe, uh, you can give that way, and there is a drop-down menu there that will say Burnt Cabin that you can uh, tag that money to as well. So thank you so much. We've always been a very generous church to help out Burnt Cabin, and it does so much for our youth and us adults as well. Um, and also in uh, April... We will have the Wednesday night dinners going on, and that money will be used to help fund scholarships for kids going to Burnt Cabin and for our session uh, this summer in Bur at Burnt Cabin and also other Bay activities that are happening. So that's all real exciting st stuff as well. So um, most of you know, pretty much all of you know, this church has a, a longstanding good relationship with Burnt Cabin with going to camp there and helping serve to help that camp and stuff. And, and we just look for that to get better and, and better. And so um, it's, it's my pleasure and honor to be able to introduce Don English this morning. Uh, with him is his one of his sons, Dion. He's got six kids and how many grandkids? Six grandkids. So if they would all showed up this morning, they'd help our attendance a bunch. But uh, unfortunately, just Don and, and Dion came, but we're so glad that they are here to join us. And if you were here again during Bible class, you've already heard a lot of great things that are going to be happening uh, at Burnt Cabin. So we're excited uh, to have Don. So I'm going to try to, he did a good job of, of telling a lot of what I was going to tell. So I'm going to try to summarize uh, some about it. But those that weren't in Bible class, this is good information for you as well. Uh, so he grew up in New York on a small farm. I uh, spent a lot of time in the outdoors. I knew I liked him and uh, spent a lot of time doing sports. Uh, he has an engineering degree, and, uh, and he used that for a while and ended up in Vian, Oklahoma, and there's more to that story. You can ask him. His wife, Lydia, uh, grew up in Stillwell, Oklahoma, so she's uh, the Oklahoma girl and, and our eventual connection with Don here. And she's from a family of seven, and she spent her time doing 4-H and basketball and reading and being a Stillwell resident picking berries, right? And uh, her family uh, were members of the Stillwell, Stillwell Church of Christ, and her father was an elder there. And again, that's, that's the spiritual connection that ties back to Don, right? And so... They met in 1990 at a McDonald's where Lydia was a manager, and he was actually her employee for a while. And, and so that's, that's kind of interesting, right, preparing him for married life. Um, on their second... <laughs> did I say that out loud? But, you know, all right. So on their second date, uh, Lydia told Don, hey, you need the gospel uh, in your life. And six weeks later, he was baptized into Christ and engaged soon after that. And uh, they were married about five months after their first date. It must have been meant to be, right? And, uh, and then the next day, they moved back to New York for him to work at an engineering job. And uh, I'm calling this their true calling story. So in 1996, they felt God pulling on them to do ministry, to get more involved, serve the Lord. And so they moved to Searcy where he enrolled at Harding and uh, spent, I guess, a four-year degree in two years. Uh, crazy. And after graduation, they served uh, in, at the Johnstown Church of Christ and the Albany Church of Christ in New York. And while he was there, they worked 24 years with Camp Hunt uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, but in the last few years, if you were in class, they had some family uh, things going on that they felt the need to come back closer home, and that's where uh, Burnt Cabin came in. And uh, so he was looking for a job, and he would pretty much given up finding a, a preaching job close to uh, this the area where his parents lived, and sure enough, here comes the Harding ad for 
uh, burnt cabin camp manager, and he'll tell you that it's just straight across the lake from burnt cabin to his parents' house, which it, it was a God thing. I tell you, this whole thing, spend more time talking to him and me about that because we can tell you this was a God thing all over the place. And so they moved back, started as camp managers there at Burnt Cabin. And, um, you know, I've really enjoyed getting to know uh, Don. I've spent a lot of time out at camp working with Sam and others, and I've already started enjoying working out there with Don. And, uh, you know, he talked about work days and uh, just we're, we're fired up. We're fired up about camp and all that it does. And I love the way that he ended uh, the class time uh, talking about the reason camp is there as a mission for this church and other churches and to reach out and bring others to Christ and strengthen our faith. And that's what it's about. All the facilities and all that, that's just a method of the means, just like our facility here. But, um, you know, we're excited about camp. It's, it's great. Excited to have Don here with us this morning. I'm going to have him come up and we'll pray with him and then he will preach to us. God and Father, thank you so much for your hand in so many things that uh, we do here in life, Father. And we, just, we don't realize what all that you're involved in. We know that you're involved in everything. But um, we thank you so much for sending Don and Lydia and the family uh, to Burnt Cabin, to work there, to continue to spread your word and use that camp as a, a mission, as an outreach. And we thank you so much for the relationship that this church in Broken Arrow has with Burnt Cabin and so many other churches as well. And we see that growing as time goes on and, and we pray for the youth of this congregation and other congregations, Father, and we know that uh, camp and opportunities to do that are a huge part of their spiritual lives. And bless Don Lydia and bless him as he preaches to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Richard. <clears throat> Good morning. I am glad to be here. I'm trying to find a clicker here, sorry. Uh, it is great to be here. Uh, great. I wish my rest of my family could have been with us this morning, but unfortunately they weren't able to. Uh, how many of you are confident? Wow. Wow. Bring lunch in. <laughs> How many of you, I was going to say, how many of you are confident? And then I didn't see any hands. Then now, then my next question was, how many of you are confident in your faith? Hey, there we go. All right, that's much better. Much better. Listen, I, I am, well, I'm a result of confidence. That's who I am. I'm a result of confidence. Richard mentioned a little bit about my story, and I want to begin this, this morning just by talking about how I began my, my, my walk with Christ. And that was, you know, back in 1990, I was going through a rough patch in my life. I had just finished engineering school. I had my first job out in the, um, working with a small tool and die company. I was designing plastic injection molds. If you want to know what that is later on, you come talk to me. But, but uh, we were making a lot of molds for the car industry and all, all sorts of different types of molds uh, for plastic injection molding. And uh, things in my personal life weren't working out. We'll leave it at that. There's a longer story to that. I'll leave it out, out for this morning. But basically it came down to the point where I said to myself, you know what, I need to get out of here. I just, I need a change. I don't know what direction my life is going in, but I need a change. I need something different. And so my grandfather was talking to me uh, the one one weekend, and he said, I just bought some property in Vianne, Oklahoma. Now, <clears throat> if you've been through Vianne, it's not that big of a place. Well, don't think of downtown Vianne, because that's the metropolis compared to where he decided to buy a place, okay? That's the metropolis. See, he bought a place on Evening Shade Road. Evening Shade Road, which was this long, uh, dusty, very dusty, dirt road that goes... Uh, from Highway 100 over to Marble City. So he bought this 40-acre ranch in the middle of nowhere, in the absolute middle of nowhere, and he said, I'm going to retire there in two years. 
Ah. Hey, Grandpa, what do you think about me moving down there and getting the ranch, you know, fixing fence and doing this stuff? Richard mentioned I, I grew up on a farm. And so, you know, getting everything ready for you so when you move down there in two years, it's all cleaned up for you. He said, sounds good to me. Well, that's all it took. That's all it took. I packed all my stuff. I, I gave my notice at work. Uh, I'll, I'll have to tell you a little bit of the part of the story. I had saved a bunch of money because I was planning on getting married. Didn't happen. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I had a bunch of money saved up. So I said, you know what? I'm going to move to Oklahoma, move to the middle of nowhere, and I'm going to become a hermit. Right? Perfect. Perfect. Well, I am a people person. And that didn't last very long, and so I ended up starting to go back and forth to NSU, uh, and, and I was taking some management classes there to try to help with my engineering degree, and I thought, okay, that might work. But then driving from Evening Shade Road all the way into Telequah every other day started to eat away at my savings that I was going to last two years. And so I decided that I would have to have a little bit of income. Now, folks, again, Engineering degree, engineering mind, don't want a real job trying to be a hermit. So I got out a sheet of paper, because we didn't have computers back then, just so you know, all right? So I got out a sheet of paper and I scribbled down exactly what I needed to make to pay for that gas only. Well, that ended up being very little. Pretty much a part-time, minimum wage job, six to eight hours a week. I said, McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. And so like Richard said, I walked into McDonald's and I got that job. And, and then my first manager, the first day I worked, was my soon-to-be wife. And yes, I'm still her employee. <laughs> <clears throat> Our first day, I took her horseback riding down to my grandfather's ranch. I had some horses, and we, t we went horseback riding, and I made her a quiche. I'm telling you, guys, all you guys out there, let me tell you, that's how you win a girl's heart right there, okay? Take her horseback riding, make her a quiche, show her you can cook. You're all good. So that was all good, and, and that went well, and that day ended, ended in an unusual way. It ended as I took her back home and leaned over to try to get that first kiss, and she gave me a hug. But it was encouraging, and so I, I immediately, you know, we set up the second day. Now, the second day was this Oklahoma thing. I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't understand this one because I'm from upstate New York, little farming community, farming community, got that? Okay. We went cruising. I didn't know what that was. She goes, just get in the car, we're going to drive. We're going to drive from Sonic, we're going to drive up to the Sitco, and then we're going to turn around and come back down, and we're going to do that again and again <laughs> and again. <laughs> I better work a couple more hours to get gas money. <laughs> and so, so during that drive, it's our second, now, second day, and I, it was important, I told you, she gave me a hug. I haven't kissed this girl even yet. Okay? During that second date, that is exactly when, with all the confidence that she had, she looked at me and said, you know, we could never get married. <laughs> what? I, that was not in my vocabulary at the moment. Second date, and I, I, but it intrigued me. And I said, well, why is that? And she goes, you don't believe the same things about religiously that, that I do. And I was like, oh boy. So immediately myself, I'm starting to think, oh boy, oh boy. You know, is, I don't know what she's into. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on here because I thought I was normal. Okay. Con turns out I wasn't. But, uh, you know, I thought I was normal. And so she says, no. I, so I start questioning her. I said, well, you believe in God? And she goes, yes. I said, whew, that's good. All right. She goes, I said, you believe in Jesus? And she says, yeah. Okay. I said, born of a virgin, died on a cross? She goes, yeah. I said, oh, whew. 
So you believe in the Bible? And she goes, you don't. Whoa. What are you talking about? Because I didn't grow up in the church, and I didn't grow up in a, in a Bible-based church at all. I grew up in a denomination that, that you came in and you went through a routine. You stood when you were supposed to stand, you kneeled when you were supposed to kneel, and you, you said the words that were in the blue book. So she said to me, listen, I can't explain it right now. And I'm thinking, we're driving back and forth, I don't know why, but uh, <clears throat> come to church with me and I'll show you. Now, there's two things I want you to know about that first experience I had in a church of Christ. Number one, I went to the Bible class with her, with her, and they were all speaking in code. Okay, They were saying things like 2 Corinthians 1.4. You know, Hebrews 10.19. I, I didn't know what that even meant back then. So, but the other thing that, I, that happened that day is for the first time in my life, I walked out of a church building having learned something. I was hooked. I had to know more. I had to find out more. And it was about six weeks later, I was baptized into Christ. But it wasn't, if it wasn't for her confidence, her confidence in her faith and how important it was to her that I learn about that faith, I would not be standing here today. You know, there's another, another person in, in the Bible that I want to use as an illustration this morning, and that, that is David. You know, we all know the story of David and Goliath. I hope you know it. You know, that, that story is a great story. The beginning of that story is where I just want to st stand uh, this morning here. And that, that, that beginning of the story starts out with David being home, taking care of the flock, right? He's, he's home, and his father coming to him saying, saying, hey, your brothers are all out on the battle lines. You need to take them some bread. And here's some cheese. That, the cheese isn't for his brothers, by the way. The cheese is for the, the commanders, right? The commander of his thousands. So, so bring some bread and take the commander uh, some cheese and, and go out there and, and just encourage them. And so he walks out there. He walks out there at the time that, that this nine and a half foot, nine and a half foot, <coughs> excuse me, nine and a half foot monster of a man comes out to the battle line. And he comes out to the battle line. The Bible actually says all of Israel, everybody on Israel's side hid at that time. They hid. So scripture tells us they, they are fearing him. But he comes out every time and and makes this, this grandiose option for them, one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano here, right? Anybody wants to come out and fight me, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. You win, we'll be your servants. I win, you're our servants. And like I said, nobody's taking him up on this. Folks, this is happening, when David finally shows up, it's been happening for 40 days. 40 days, day and night. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how demoralizing that is to have someone up there like that? In walks shepherd boy David with his bread and cheese. Right? He walks in, and he walks in at the time that this guy is, is doing this, and, and his reaction is completely opposite of everyone that's been there, everyone that's on the battle lines. We have all of these fighting men, and then you have this shepherd boy who comes in, and he finally comes in and says, <clears throat> excuse me, he finally comes in and says, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that, we should, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Out of all these fighting men, <clears throat> this teenager, supposedly, right? This teenager walks in and says, are you kidding? Why are you guys hiding? Why aren't you going out there? 
You see, he's got confidence, folks. He has got all sorts of confidence. He has confidence in, in everything that he does. He even goes to the king and says, I'm going to go out there and do this. And the king says, well, you can't go out there and do this. You're too young. It's not going to work. It'll be bad. You know, he says, no, no, no. God has allowed me to kill lions and bears when they come after my sheep. And this guy will be no different. Your servant has killed both lion and bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he has defied the armies of the living God. Confidence. The second part of that story, as he goes out, you know, he goes out with no armor, no nothing. He goes out with five smooth stones, which he only needed one. I don't know why he grabbed five. But he goes out with five smooth stones with his sling, and he, he, he throws one at him. Knock, it sinks into the forehead, knocks him down. He goes, grabs his own sword and cuts off his head. Goliath is no more. Can you imagine what the Philistines were thinking at that moment? The Philistines are thinking, wow, if the shepherd boy can kill our greatest warrior, what are the rest of them going to do? Right? But at the same time, the Israelites are going, whoa, look at that. And David walking back to the camp is, I, I can, you know, if David was a typical teenager, if he was, I'm not saying he was, but if he was a typical teenager from nowadays, listen, I've got two teenage sons. I know exactly what David would be saying. David would be walking back with the Goliath sword slung over his shoulder, you know, head in the other hand going, was this the guy you were afraid of? Right? This was it? You see, that's what it should have been. That should have been. All of Israel should have been looking at this guy, looking at him and saying, he is defi- he's not defying me. He's not calling me out personally. He's, he's defying God. And God is God. He's the same God that parted the Red Sea, that brought the uh, ten plagues upon Egypt. He's the same God that continues to watch over them day and night by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire when they were coming up out of Egypt. They all know these stories. They're, they're, they're ingrained in their minds. And yet it takes a shepherd boy to have all that confidence to finally just show them that confidence is not something that we have in ourselves, but we have it in the God we serve. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. So what stops our confidence? What stops our confidence? I'm going to tell you right now, fear stops our confidence, right? Fear. There are many things in this world that I don't like, okay? Uh, not a lot that I fear in this world. Uh, I will tell you, snakes might be one of them, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, a little frightening on that side. Uh, but fear is, is something that we all deal with in some way or another. The Israelites on the line there, they were, they were dealing with that fear of, you know, it may, it, I may die. I, I can't go up against Goliath. There's, there's a million reasons why I can't go up against Goliath. And so, so they continue to fear. And fear, it's easy to let it into our lives. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You also have potential. And the more we realize our potential, the more we realize our potential as God's servants, the more fear disappears. Because the more confident we get, we need to understand that that God has a plan for each and every one of us. You know, you know, we are God's workmanship. You know, Ephesians two ten, Ephesians two ten, for we are uh, His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, folks. God has a plan for you. You may not be able to see it. If you would come to me. Right? If you had come to you know, early 20s, me, just finished up engineering school, living in New York, engaged to be married, uh, going to move to Florida, uh, and said, hey, you're going to end up in Broken Arrow in 2024, I would have said, what are you talking about? 
You see, God's got a plan for each and every one of us. The, the, the great thing about it is, is the plan's already set. We just got to follow through and follow him to find it. Following God is the way that he introduces the plan to us. If you will open your hearts to serve him and be confident in your serving, he will show you what he has for you to do. He shows us through his word. He shows us through other people. He shows us through the gifts that he blesses us with. In all of those things, we need to be confident in Christ. So that's what I want to talk to you this morning about, is being confident in Christ. If there was any person in the Bible that was more confident, I don't know who it is, because Christ was very, very confident. There's one time, there's one time that he doesn't seem confident, and that's, that's in the garden. And even in, that, even in that scene in the garden when he's laying prostrate on the ground, crying out to God for the cup to be passed from him, he's still, he's still willing to go through with it. Not your will, or not my will, but your will be done, right? Not my will, but your will be done. So he's still willing to go through with it. It's the only time in his entire ministry, in his entire life, that we don't see confidence. We see confidence in him when he's 12 years old. He's down at the temple, and his parents finally find him after three days. I don't know what that's like to lose your child for three days, but you know that, that, would, be, that would be incredible for the parents. But he, they find him at the temple, and he's... He sits there in full confidence and says, where did you think I would be? Where did you think I would be? And throughout his career, you know, in his ministry, as he actually is out there walking amongst the people and continuing to teach his disciples, the confidence just ooze, oozes from him. It just continues to, to show his confidence. And his confidence, again, is in the Father. He says, everything that I say comes from the Father. And so he has this confidence that continues on. Even when, when the boat is sinking, when the boat is sinking in the storm and his disciples are crying out, Jesus, we're all going to die, he kind of wakes up and goes, oh, peace be still, and he, the whole storm stops, and he turns around and goes, why do you have such little faith? Folks, I believe one of the challenges of the church, and this is worldwide, one of the challenges of the church worldwide is to stand up and be counted. To stand up and be counted to have the courage to stand up and live the life that God has called us to live. There are too many people in this world that, there are too many of us, okay? There are too many of us that, that are living in this world that are trying to blend in with everyone else instead of standing out. Folks, you're called to stand out. Listen, and it, and. You have great reasons to have confidence in Christ. Just as God had, con as Jesus had confidence in God, we have confidence also. So, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and of love and of self discipline. Now, I'm telling you that this is our calling. We have got to be a people who are willing to stand up and be different when the world wants us all to blend in. I'm going to let you in. Now, I'm going to tell these, all the teenagers that are here, they're going to be at camp this summer. Do not come up to me and say this to me, okay? Because I'm not going to be happy about it here. My pet peeve in this entire world. I only tell you that, by the way, because my sons like to do it to me. My be biggest pet peeve in this world is what, Dion? He doesn't want to say it. You do you. That is a saying that is in this world right now that just, it, it, it is worse than, for you older people, fingernails across the chalkboard. Yeah, it's worse than that for me. You do you. No. 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 You do Christ. That's what you do. No, you do you means we accept everything and everyone. 
the way they are, and, and they can stay that way. No, God accepts everyone the way they are, but what, doesn't want to leave them that way. He wants to make them better. So we can accept people from where they're starting, but that's not where they end. If my wife, if my wife had left me where I was, my whole life would have been different. My whole life would have been completely different than it is today. And I would not have the confidence in Christ that I do have. So, let us approach the throne of grace with confidence. Folks, we need to be able to, to be confident in everything we do, knowing that God has, well, in, in today's vernacular, God's got our back. God is going to be with us no matter what. Uh, to help us in our time of need, as, as Hebrews cha uh, chapter 4 says. So real quick, real quick here. So uh, you can have either confidence in yourself or you can have confidence in Christ. Now I'm going to tell you the differences here. First of all, confidence in self, you, see, we can see, you can see if this fits you, okay? We're going we're gonna to see if this fits you. Here we go. Uh, so if you uh, like beating yourself up over all your mistakes... You're leaning too much on yourself. If you uh, refuse to accept any compliments, you are relying too much on yourself. If you're a people pleaser and you like to please everyone, no matter who they are, no matter what they've done, no matter wh what kind of life they live, you are relying too much on yourself. If you're constantly comparing yourself to others, you're in big trouble. But you're relying way too much on yourself. And if your happiness depends on others, you are definitely relying too much on yourself. And last, you're always getting the short end of the stick. You believe that you're always getting the short end of the stick or that this world's out to get you. You're relying way too much upon yourself. You see, the other side of this is to have confidence in Christ. And so to have confidence in Christ, there's a, there's a few things that we know. Now, when I say we know them, that means we know them. That means they are fact, right? We are, they are fact. We come to worship a God every single, uh, every single Sunday. We come and we worship God. Why? Because the Bible tells us to? Well, that's a good reason, sure. But that's not why we worship God. Why do we worship God? Well, we really like the singing. No, that's not it either. Well, the preacher's pretty good. No, no, that's not what it is either. We worship God. You know why? It's a very simple answer. And I, I love trying to trick people into, into giving answers for this because there's, there, everybody goes, well, we love God. We, we, no, here's why you worship God. Because he's God. That's it. That's it. There's no one else to worship, folks. There's no one else to worship. We worship God because he is God. And so there's a few things that we need to know deep in our core. Deep in our core in order to have uh, this, this confidence in Christ. So this confidence in, in Christ comes first and foremost by knowing God is perfect. God doesn't make mistakes, and that goes also for you. God, I love, if you guys, ever guys have watched some of the uh, skit guys on, on YouTube or uh, on the internet, you know, the skit guys have this one skit where they say, God doesn't make junk. Well, you know what, I agree with that. I read the uh, Ephesians earlier. God's, you are God's workmanship, and he doesn't make junk. So, folks, we need to know that God is perfect, and because he is perfect, you know, his, uh, he has made you perfect also through, through Christ. His word is true. His word is true. There's nothing else that, can be, that, that you can count on in your entire life except scripture. Well, I'll tell you what, this one really hits home for me sometimes because I, early in my ministry, when we moved to Johnstown in 1998 uh, to start working with the church there, it was, uh, 
it was Easter Sunday, actually. It was Easter Sunday when, when I got a phone call right after worship. I mean, like, minutes after worship. And it was a man on the other end. His name was Robert Wright. And he said to me, he said, listen, is there any chance that I could come talk to you? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I'm at the church building. Can you get here? He goes, yeah, I can get there. I'll be there in, well, you got to know Johnstown, in five minutes. <laughs> Everywhere is five minutes in Johnstown. And he got there, and, and the first thing he said to me is, listen, I, I need you to know right up front that I have AIDS. I said, Okay. He said, when I was a young adult, I did some things that were not right, and I shared, I, w I was a drug addict. And I got AIDS from it. I said, okay. He said, I got six months to live. He said, I've been going to church, to every church in this area. In every church says they're right. Who's right? Who's right? And I opened up the Bible and I said, God's right. Every person in this world, at some point or another, will let you down. Every single person. They can be the best person in the whole world. They're going to let you down. For you, if you gave newlyweds out there, I'm sorry to let you know this, but your spouse will let you down if they haven't already. Your kids will let you down. Your parents will let you down. But God's word is true. God's word never changes, and it is perfect in every way. It is never going to let you down. The next thing is that I want you to know, again, I've already said this a little bit. He, he created you in his image. You're in God's image, in his character, and you have a purpose in life. And his power works through your life. Folks, if we want to have confidence in Christ, this is what we need to understand, to know in our very cores that he's perfect, he's true, he created, us in, uh, he created us in his image and for a purpose, and his power works through your life. If we can actually live that every day, if we can live that every day, I am telling you right now, the world would be a different place. If you can live it in your own house, your family will be a different, different family. If you live it at work, your workplace will become different. If we can live it in our churches, can you imagine how, if we had a whole congregation of confident Christians willing to stand up and do anything in serving God, that would be amazing. Some scriptures to back that all up for you. Number one, Matthew 5.48. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. And then again, in 2 Timothy 3.16, All Scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped in every good work. And also in Isaiah, I wanted to bring this one up because I like this one. Do not fear. For I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you and my righteous hand, uh, with my righteous hand. And lastly, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. Folks, the reason we're not confident is we, we, we don't see our potential. And our potential isn't in our, own, in our own talents. It's in God's abilities. And they are vast. They are vast. If you don't believe me, go to Job 38 and read from there. Uh, he let Job know everything right there. Uh, 
but we need to be a confident church, right? We need, we need that confidence building up, building up, and building up. If we can do that, we certainly will be, make a different place in this world. God's given us a lot of tools. He's given us a lot of abilities. You can see it in, every, in, in the people around you. You can see the talents that God has blessed them with. And as he's blessed, that, blessed them, he's blessed you also. Let's use those talents specifically, specifically for God's grace. Folks, I want to finish it with that story with a couple, couple little uh, endings to those stories. Richard Wright. Richard Wright, uh, later that day, was baptized into Christ. We studied for about four hours while my family got the tra traditional uh, Easter dinner at McDonald's <clears throat> while I studied with him. And uh, he was baptized into Christ. Was a faithful member for about a month and a half, and then he was housebound. And he died almost to the day, six months later. But he died confident in Christ. A friend of mine also, a friend of mine also <clears throat> was very confident. I love what he said. I was, I was with him the day before Christmas. Uh, the day before Christmas in, I think, in 2012. The day before Christmas in 2012, and he, uh, he was in the hospital, and he was also dying of liver cancer. And he said to me, he said, Donna, I, I don't know what's next, but I know it's going to be great. Folks, may we all live in that kind of confidence. My confidence started January 9th, 1991, when I put Christ on in baptism, and from that day forward, my life has changed, and my life has been different. So folks, I'm going to offer an invitation this morning for, for those of you that are here that, that may not have had that opportunity to, to commit yourself to Christ. To rise up in the confidence of knowing that through Christ we have salvation. Through Christ we are buried with him in his death. We're raised with him to the newness of life. And we share not only in his death but also in his resurrection. We have a great God and a wonderful Savior. And God has blessed us in every way. So... If you have anything this morning that you, the elders here or the ministers here can help you with, I, I know, I know that they're ready to help you in any possible way. Come as we stand and sing. Launch a foundation, you are faithful to the end. Oh, we are waiting. On you, Jesus, we believe you're all to us. Only Son of God, sent from heaven, hope and mercy at the cross. You are everything. You're the promise, Jesus, you are all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Let the saving love of Christ be the measure of our lives. We believe you're all to us. When this passing world is over, we will see you face to face and forever. you are all to us let the 
glory of your name be the passion of the church let the righteousness of god be holy flame that burns let the saving love of christ be the measure of our lives we believe your all to us yes your all to us your all to us your all to us jesus you are all to us sing it out let the glory of your name be Let me see you, please. Well, another good Sunday. Atticus Brown has come forward. He wants to be baptized. His dad's going to come up here with Atticus now and take his confessions. Thank you, Atticus. And please forgive me. I, uh, I only have two gears. One's not existent, and the other's very emotional. So this will be a struggle, but... There's very few days, oh, I think, as, as powerful as getting to see your children born. And so far, God's letting me see two of them be born twice. Atticus, you understand that, like we talked about, you have no chance to get to heaven. You can never earn your way but with God's grace and, and the sacrifice of his son that he provided and that his son was willing to give Jesus do you believe that in a few moments you have the ability to get to heaven yeah do you believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior yes do you love God yes with your confession we're going to go get you baptized to sing a little bit as they go prepare for the baptism. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I'd wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows dispelling with joy I am telling, made all the darkness depart. And heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down, and glory filled my soul. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that 
makes me white as snow. No other fault I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus for my part, and this I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing. This my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blow makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood, and there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be whiter, much whiter than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. A great day, boy. shall come again let the people sing amen amen when the lord shall come again let the people sing amen amen sing amen amen sing amen amen let the people sing amen amen sing amen amen sing amen amen let the people sing amen amen it's been a wonderful morning amen let them all get resettled in here and get the screen back going and i'll invite my brother to come up here and we will prepare to sing in preparation for the Lord's Supper. All right, we'll go back and forth. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of glory died, my richest King, I count but lost. 
I would like to ask each one of you if it's possible to bring out your cup and put it in your hand, please. Por favor, hermanos, si pueden sacar la copita que tienen en sus manos y la pongan en sus manos. Y quiero pedirles, I would like to ask you, what this cup mean to you? Or what this cup mean to each one of us? Tradition? Ideas? Celebration? What does it mean to you? Let me ask before we keep going. Last Sunday, according to the tradition, they celebrate what? They celebrate the Easter, right? What is Easter? A celebration? A tradition? Or a party? Or a play, a time to go to, to the park? Or a time to get a new dress? Or a time to... What is, what is what? What was the, the, the Easter idea? What is it? Because it's just an idea, because it is just a uh, tradition. It's already past. It's already behind us. There's nothing important about that, because this was a tradition. It was just an idea. And you know what, my brother? When it's something like that, it's like tradition, an idea, or a celebration, the past, that will not give us, as the preacher said this morning, it will not give us confidence. It will not give us power. It will not give us perseverance. Because that is only a tradition. Let me remind you this moment, my friends. This is a conviction. It's a promise. It's a, a living Sacrifice that Christ gave for us. The Bible said, every time that you partake of this bread and blood, he said, remember what I did for you. Remember, make him alive. Make him part of you. Only until then, this is important for us. If you don't, forget about it. If it's not real, if it's not truthful, if it's not passionately alive, it's nothing for us. So my brethren, with loving respect, every time that we partake of this, the bread and the, and the, the wine, remember what Jesus did. Remember what Jesus promised. And remember, he said, I will come back. And make that alive every day. And that makes a lot of difference. Amen? Hermanos, esta copa quizás representará una idea, una práctica, una tradición. Algo, hermanos, que a lo mejor solamente se quedó la semana pasada. Pero, hermanos, cuando esto es real, cuando esto es vivo, entonces cambia tu forma de ser. Entonces se hace real para ti. 
y empiezas a cambiar, empiezas a luchar aquello que es verdadero. El hermano hablaba en esta mañana de la confidencia, de la perseverancia, de la entrega. Si esto, hermanos, es solamente una idea, esa enseñanza no sirve para nada. Pero si es algo verdadero, entonces va haciéndose tuya, haciéndose mía y nos dará la convicción para seguir adelante. Brothers, God bless you and let's remember this and make it a life for own everyday living. Thank you. Oremos. Padre, gracias por otro día más de vida, salud. Dios, en esta mañana recordamos lo que ya has hecho por nosotros, Dios. Este pan que representa ese cuerpo, ese cuerpo que fue maltratado, golpea, golpeado, humillado en esa cruz. Gracias por tu amor y gracias. Te pido que bendices a cada mi hermano que vamos a participar, Dios. Y nunca nos olvidamos lo que ya has hecho. Gracias por todo, en nombre de Jesucristo. Amén. En continuing our prayer, gracious Father, we gather in your presence to remember at this time the sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ. And as we break this bread, let it be a symbol of his body given to us that we might, that we are made whole. Bless this bread, O Lord, and as we partake of it, let us remember the unity and the love that binds us together as your children. For reminded, we are reminded today, even as we have witnessed Atticus's new birth, we're reminded of our birth in Christ when we were buried with him in baptism into his death. And just as you raised him from the dead, we too were given a new life. And Father, may this act of communion renew our spirits, Strengthen our faith and draw us closer to you. And we pray this in the name of your son, Jesus, our crucified and risen Savior. Amen. Let's pray. Bendito Padre Celestial, muchas gracias por tu amor y tu misericordia, Dios. En esta mañana venimos ante tu presencia para darte gracias por este jugo que para nosotros los cristianos representa tu sangre preciosa, Padre, para el perdón de nuestras faltas. Bendice a cada uno de mis hermanos que está aquí presente, Señor. Ayúdanos a recordar ese momento tan histórico para nosotros y tan emocional para cada uno de nosotros, Padre. Te pedimos que, que bendigas este lugar, Señor, que bendigas esta iglesia y que nos sigas bendiciendo y que sigas poniendo en nuestra mente, Señor, que nunca olvidemos este sacrificio que has hecho para nosotros, Padre. Nos ponemos en tus manos y te pedimos perdón, Señor, en el nombre de tu Hijo Cristo, nuestro Salvador. Amén. Let's continue our prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you with thanks. We come before you not really able to fully grasp and understand that your love for us, that you were willing to give everything to us. Lord, we thank you that your son was willing to come to earth, that he walked, that he bled, and that he died a horrible death for the things that we, that I have done in this body. And Lord, as we take this cup, we remember your promises, we remember your son's blood, and remember that we are cleansed through it, and we are so thankful for that you loved us for. And we pray all of this through your son's holy name. Amen.
I'll say, come back up here and join me for our, our closing song. If you would stand for this song, please. De paz inundaba mi senda ya esté. Amadísimo Padre Celestial que estás en el cielo, te damos gracias por este día, Señor, gracias por este momento que nos traes a compartir con los hermanos americanos, Señor, gracias por esta oportunidad, Señor, gracias por ser testigo de, de un hijo tuyo, Señor, que hoy decidió ponerte en su, en su vida, Señor. Señor, bendice a todos los hermanos que están aquí, Señor. Danos otra nueva oportunidad en otro momento de volver a estar aquí, Señor. Gracias, en nombre de Cristo, Señor. Amén. Another reminder to give uh, either trays in the back, on your way out, you can also give online at the church website. Uh, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that we've been able to pray to you, to sing songs to you, to hear a message. We thank you for people like Don and Burnt Cabin uh, that give us that opportunity to get away to minister to you, to minister our kids. Um, we thank you for the recent baptisms, Atticus, Anderson, Shauna. We thank you for their hearts that are open to take you on so that they can have confidence in you. We also pray for the others that have not made that decision yet that we will be able to minister to them, to give them what they need to have that confidence. Um, please keep us safe throughout the day. And in the end, give us a home with you in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>